Thank you everyone watching or listening for your time to join us at the Aerospace and Defense webinar series. I'm Josh Carlson, and I'm a technical product manager on the Siemens Digital Manufacturing Business Enablement and Industry Solutions team. Before we jump into the human simulation demo that I'll be sharing with you today, I want to pause and revisit two of the key trends that Zvika shared that are most relevant for our conversation today. First, let's talk about sustainability. When you think about sustainability, what's the first topic that comes to mind? Usually when I ask this question, and as Zvika discussed, it's about environmental impact, reducing carbon footprints, optimizing resource utilization, or you know, potentially just implementing a 3R strategy, reduce, reuse, and recycle. My mind, and what I hope you will consider moving forward, is the sustainability of human health and safety during manufacturing production, as well as during the use and maintenance of the product once it enters service. Next, we should consider the workforce challenges around knowledge transfer and closing the skills gap that Zvika mentioned. We will look at how virtual technologies like simulation and virtual reality can help with reskilling, upskilling, and attracting new talent. Of course, worker safety should be considered here as well. A critical aspect of implementing intelligent manufacturing and addressing workforce and human sustainability challenges is through digital simulation of the human factor. The simulation spans across both the manufacturing production life cycle and the product life cycle. Now, let's dive into a couple of use cases of how Process Simulate Human brings together the real and the virtual world to help you ramp up faster, reduce costs, and deliver right first time. First, I want to start with the use case of how airframers and aircraft assembly companies are using Process Simulate Human to plan and validate the human factor in the production life cycle. Of course, this use case isn't limited to airframers or aircraft assembly companies. Uh, it's been applied by many users to other areas across aerospace and defense, such as land and space systems, defense applications, and avionics, or aerospace and defense focused electronics. The two demos I'm going to address here um, are for two different assembly processes um, around airframing. The first being wing assembly, where shop floor technicians join a wing to the fuselage of an aircraft. The second being installation of a wheel on a landing gear assembly. It's important to consider, you know, before we jump in, that within manufacturing production, especially for aerospace and defense, there is a hybrid of shop floor technicians performing manual tasks uh, of various kinds, and the incorporation of robotics, machinery, automation, and other control technologies. Everything's coming together. Creating a truly comprehensive digital twin requires bringing both that human factor and the robotic and machinery factor together. So let's let's jump in. This first demo starts with the planning and validation of an overhead gantry system, uh, what, what you see here. And this ga overhead gantry system is used to assist four technicians as they position, align the wing for assembly to the fuselage um, before they can safely and properly join the assemblies. Looking at this, we can answer several questions, such as, is the proposed station layout feasible and optimal? You know, within the station layout, we can look at things like, where are my fixtures? Are the fixture designs proper? Where are my structures around the plane? What tools um, are needed and where are they located? You could look at things like the desks and workstations as well. We also look at whether we can avoid collisions during install. As you saw at the beginning of the video when the wing was turning red when it collided with the fuselage, we can assess those type of things as well. Next is, you know, can the technicians safely and ergonomically handle this process? Are they able to stand and move the wing into position? Are they crouching? You know, what height should the gantry be at? Um, and validating that part of the process. Are certain size techs needed? You know, do we do we need very tall workers, very short workers, and assessing um, workers of different sizes? And then, you know, as we see here, you know, the vision window, we can actually see what they're seeing on the floor during the install to make sure that there's no blind installs um, or, you know, reworking an area if there is a blind install. So you can see um, right at the kind of the tail end of that video, the work zone um, 
ergonomic tool that where we can quickly assess safe work zones and propose adjustments if needed. Next, we're going to look at a comparison of two different size techs performing the same wheel installation on a landing gear assembly. The human digital twin can be scaled precisely to whatever your workforce workforce size is, you know, whether you're using a wizard to customize everything or using a, uh, existing databases with percentiles for you know, rapid scaling, um, depending on your customer requirements. Um, we're also going to take a look at some of the best in class ergonomic tools in the, in the industry that we have within Process Simulate Human um, to assess things um, both dynamically and statically during a, a simulation. So we're going to be looking at things like lower back strain in this um, in this simulation uh, dynamically, but we can also look at a more detailed uh, analysis and reporting generation where we can look at things um, in addition to lower back, such as NIOSH, OWAS, strength, fatigue, and, and strain index indices. We can answer questions such as, is this process safe and optimal? Should considerations or assist devices be implemented, like having the wheel uh, be on a pallet that's raised off the ground in order to prevent the bending, um, which we see through these reports. You know, most of the the issues with this task are around that bend, that initial bend to pick up the wheel. Other questions such as, are there restrictions or limits on possible tech sizes? So as we close it here with. Some of the, an example of two of the reports comparing uh, Jack versus Jill performing this task. Now let's shift gears to a new example, and uh, this this other example is going to be around a, a land system use case. Seeing how the human digital twin within simulation um, can be used to look at factors across the product life cycle. So we started with production. Now we're going to shift to the product life cycle. So just like in the um, previous use case, right, of course, I want to remind you that this is applicable to every area of aerospace and defense, not just land systems. So in this first demo, uh, we're immersing in VR with what, what we call live hands. So we're only going to be looking at the hands of an, of an operator. Um, and really, this is to perform rapid evaluations, right? You know, we don't have to get a, a human within the simulation. We're going to jump right into the cockpit, or in this case of the land system, the commander chair. And what, what this is going to allow us to do, see, we're going to quickly teleport here to, to the chair, is we're going to perform reach assessments. So can I see, visibly see, and can I reach the controls from the commander chair? Are there any blind spots inside the vehicle um, where, you know, either I can't visibly see the things that I need to see or... Are there controls that I'm going to be reaching for that, that I cannot see and need to use blind? Um, can I optimize any of the control locations? You know, if I can reach them all, okay, but are they ergonomically ideal? Um, we can also perform a deeper assessment, right? This is a rapid assessment, but we could do a deeper assessment where we put the actual sized operators um, scaled just like we saw in the last videos um, of the airframer example and put them within the the commander chair and make sure that they could, you know, reach the pedals. Are they too big for the space? Do we need to limit um, users or maintainer sizes? And now we're going to jump into this this um, this second video. In the second demo, we watch an engineer immerse with VR in Process Simulate and with motion capture technologies to walk through a testing procedure. To, of this, the product design of the engine bay of the land system to see whether a maintainer in the field could reach all necessary areas, check views for any blind procedures they may need to do during maintenance tasks, and validate those maintenance work instructions all virtually. Product design needs to be evaluated and optimized not just for production, as we saw with the airframer example, but also for the, the users, right? The people that will be in the field using and servicing these systems once entering service. Human simulation really breaks down these silos between engineering, shop floor teams, and shortens the feedback cycle on product design. Before I show us a quick sneak peek into the next webinar topic and hand it back over to Zvika, I wanna leave you thinking about human sustainability in manufacturing and product realization just a little bit longer. 
I want you to consider the human factor for both product and production life cycle and consider using the human digital twin to realize the benefits of intelligent manufacturing. So here's the sneak peek I promised uh, looking at the next webinar topic, which is focused on robotics and automation simulation. So using that same technology, that same VR technology, we're gonna immerse here and tour the entire airframing and aircraft assembly plant that we saw in that, in that first use case. So we can focus on the entire plant or in specific uh, lines, cells, or stations. You can collaborate virtually with colleagues while immersed and visualize the process firsthand, regardless of where you're located in the world. And yeah, I know, immersing is cool on its own and can provide excellent value, especially when paired with motion capture, as we just saw. But what's even more critical is being able to feed this information, the, these notes, these comments that you make within VR back into that simulation digital twin. And then, you know, we didn't have time for it today, but integrating that simulation directly into your PLM system. Just a little hint, we're going to be looking at drilling and riveting and inspection next time. So, Juan, thank you again for your time to learn more about human simulation with us today and for the aerospace and defense industry. And please reach out to discuss uh, the process simulate solution.